In today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to make respawnable mining nodes in your RPG Maker game so that your players can mine some ore and later on smelt that ore and craft it into weapons and armor. If you haven't already, then I suggest you go back and watch my tutorial on day and night systems because we'll be using some of those here. And if you love all RPG Maker content, tips, tricks, tutorials, and just general discussion around RPG Maker, then make sure you scroll down and hit subscribe and the bell icon so you can get notified whenever I upload a new video. Firstly, what we're going to do is create the event for the ore that we'll be mining. So we're just going to click on a location and select the image. I'm going to scroll down here and just select this one here to represent some tin ore. Now I'm going to go through the motions of actually mining it. So we're going to play some sound effects to make it sound like metal hitting metal. So come over to the second tab in the event commands and hit play sound effect. We're just going to play the sword sound effect. So we'll play that sound effect and then we're going to add a wait timer. So we'll wait for one second which is 60 frames. We'll do it again wait for another 60 seconds and we'll do it one last time and then we're going to wait for 10 frames and then we're going to play another sound effect which will be the earth sound effect there so now we've got this all set up let's go create the item we're going to jump over into the database and go over to the items menu and right down here I've got some tin ore so all I've done is I've named it it is a regular item its scope is no one, and it is never used, and it is not consumable. So every time the player mines some ore, this will be appearing in their inventory. So let's make that happen now. We'll click back on the event. We'll go back into the first tab and go change items. Increase the item, tin ore, by one. So next we'll play a sound effect. So we'll go back over to the second tab and play the saint sound effect. There we go, that's the one. Now we're going to show some text which just dims the background and it's in the middle saying you've mined some tin ore. Now we're going to use a control variable. So that's going in the bloopers. Next we're going to be using a control variable. So we're going to go into control variables and then the variable we'll use we'll just call mining node. Now I've already used mining node 1 so we'll use mining node 3. We're going to set that to 3. Now over here in the conditions we're going to say if the variable mining node 3 is equal to 0 then this will show up. In the new event page, we're going to say if the mining node is above or equal to 3, then nothing will happen. What this variable does is it counts down the respawn for this node. So once we mine this, it's going to disappear, and then after this variable finishes counting down from 3 to 0, then it will respawn. Now we need to go over into common events. We're going to make a new common event called node respawn. As you can see, I've already done one for mining node 1. And I'll just show you how I did that. At the very top here, I've got the control variable of mining node 1 decreasing by the value of 1. And this is going to happen every time I call upon this node respawn event. So I'll just add another one in, control variables, mining node 3, subtract by 1. So every time I call this event, it's going to subtract the mining node values. Now I'm going to create an additional branch. So if I say conditional branch if variable mining node 3 is equal to minus 1 then we're going to control variable add 1 to mining node 3 and what this is doing is the way I've got this event set up is every night when it hits 0 0 midnight every night when it hits midnight it takes one day one variable off the respawn timer so let's say you mine something and then three days later it respawns. What if you don't mine it then? This whole event is still going to run and it's going to decrease another value by one from your variable. So to make sure that doesn't affect the event, if the mining node is minus one, we're just going to add one to it. So that way it never despawns. And now if you watch my last tutorial, the last thing we're going to do is over in time counting, 
where it tells us how many minutes and how many hours are being used. Where it says if hours equals 24, then we're going to say common event node respawn. And what that means is every time it's midnight, it's going to run this event. And what this event does is decrease the respawn timer for these mining nodes. So what that means is I should be able to mine these ones and then three days later it'll respawn. Also if you guys are enjoying my content then scroll down and hit the like button because it really helps out with the YouTube algorithm and making sure my video gets to more people. Now let's test this one out. Now in the top left hand corner you can see the time, it's currently 10.20. So what we're going to do is mine this node. You've mined tin ore. We'll do this one tomorrow. So let's use this girl over here who's going to increase the time by one hour every time I talk to her. So it's one in the morning now and that means the respawn timer for this mining node over here has gone down by one. Now remember we've set that to three. What I'll do is I'll mine this one And now we're going to continue. We're just going to talk to this girl here until our mining nodes respawn. Now it's been two days since we've mined the first node. Now in one more day that first node should respawn. There you can see that after three days the respawn timer has ticked down and now that this node has respawned. In one more day, the next node will respawn. So let's do that now. Now you can see that both of these nodes have respawned because we've set the respawn timer to three and at the end of every day, it goes down by one. In the next tutorial, I'll be going over how to make experience points for mining so that you can level up your mining skill and unlock access to mining different types of ore. I'll also be going over how to add a visual effect of having a mining license come up on screen and show you what mining level you are, as well as the different types of ore you can mine at your current level. If you've enjoyed this video and you're keen as a bean for more content, then scroll down and hit subscribe and the bell icon so you can get notified when I upload more tutorials, tips and tricks, and general discussion about RPG Maker MV. Catch us later.